So my name is, uh, as Tim said, Olivier crépin Blanc. I'm the chair of the UK chapter of the Internet Society. Uh, and the Internet Society is an organization that has over 100 chapters across the world um, that has a motto called the Internet is for everyone. And I guess in our context, the IPv6 Internet is for everyone, although at present it doesn't seem to be the case uh, across the world. So this project started quite some time ago. Uh, and it was funded uh, originally uh, by a grant from the Internet Society. Uh, it received this uh, community grant, uh, not a huge amount of money, but uh, a sizable amount to be able to start the project uh, in 2009. Uh, and the whole idea was to design an IPv6 crawler, uh, a sort of crawler that would go across the uh, Alexa 1 million websites across the world and uh, try and see if uh, you had IPv6 DNS servers that were serving those uh, domain names, um, compliant web servers, SMTP, and NTP. Now, the whole project rationale is that if you don't have IPv6 content out there, you're not going to have much of a drive to have IPv6 connectivity to access that content. And so the, the whole idea was to try and find out how much content is there out there uh, on IPv6. And back in 2009, there was very little. So we were hoping to see growth, uh, and at least on a faster, faster speed that it's gone um, so far. We're basically taking, as I said, the one million uh, list uh, of Alexa. Um, it's been updated a number of times, so uh, we, we, we've not just taken the ones from 2009. Of course, things change quite a lot. Um, but the Googles, the Facebooks, the LinkedIn's of this world have always been at the top, um, the Facebooks and, and all that. And um, we're also we're testing those for IPv6. And this is equivalent to about 7 million hosts that we're testing. And when I say testing, we're not just trying to find out if they've got an IPv6 address, but we're also trying to connect to them. So we tried the web server, we tried SMTP, so we checked the MX records, checked the SMTP, and check if any of them have got NTP. Uh, um, records as well uh, on this. And we use a geo IP database based on the IPv4 address uh, to uh, try and locate where the hosts are because sometimes you do have things that are, might be under .uk but are hosted in the US or uh, of course .com. Uh, we need to find where the hosting is and, and so this all, all went uh, through the, the geo IP database. Of course, there are many other measurements out there, um, uh, many other uh, organizations and people that do this kind of traffic, uh, tracking. You can see a few of these here. The World IPv6 launch, of course, was one of the first ones to have a list of, uh, of different trackings. Uh, Google is doing amazing statistics. Uh, Six Lab and Eric Vinka, which of course is one of the, the, if you look at that page, you've got very, very good statistics. And they all uh, show one thing, uh, which is that although the numbers are quite similar to each other, none of these statistics are actually exact science. And you might have seen earlier, we spoke about the dip uh, in, in IPv6 for some of those measurements. Not quite sure whether it's due to the measuring tool or whether it's the actual use of IPv6 that's gone down. I've also, and I'll show you, there's also a dip in our statistics. statistics. We're never quite sure whether it's networks that are coming up or down, whether there's a change in the, the routing, whether there is a, a, um, some networks that are blocking us because they think that we're trying to bombard them with, uh, with uh, trace routes and, and, and pings and so on. But um, in, in, in effect, we, you, know, you can see the trend, basically, and the trend is generally uh, uh, of growth. So. We took 1 million domains. The initial crawler code, this is a little bit of history, initial crawler code was developed by uh, ISOC England with Nile University. Uh, Nile University happened to be over in Egypt, and one of the problems is after 2009, there was the Arab Spring, and that uh, actually stopped the project. We were going to continue on the project with a second phase and a third phase. Um, thankfully, all the code was not based in Egypt, it was running out of a, a safe haven in Telehouse. Um, so, um, very safe place, much safer than Tahrir Square at the time, and therefore we managed to continue with the code and with the project and running it for the early years. Then, in uh, 2013-2014, a team of uh, students 
from uh, Southampton University working with the eminent Professor Tim, uh, not Tim Berners-Lee, but Tim Chone, um, managed to uh, take on the work. And you know, it's always difficult to, to take somebody else's code and then look into it and, and think, okay, what the heck did they do? Now we have to, to expand it and change it. And so they left the crawler alone on one side, but they actually looked at the visualization of the, uh, the whole, uh, uh, all of the data, which was being collected uh, very regularly. They took Internet Society as being a customer, and so the group came up with a, uh, basically, a, they had a brief to improve the presentation, uh, following a certain number of, of uh, parameters, including open data and being able to, to make all of the data accessible uh, over the net via various interfaces and so on. So the result was something which was ready uh, pretty much in six months, I think they, they took, five, six months. Um, and so it took all the data from 2010 onwards and went, went forward with what you now have, which is the IPv6 uh, matrix. So we're looking at back about, what, four or five years ago, and it's been running uh, ever since. Of course, the data has been collected since 2010, so that's eight years of data. And so the total database size at the moment, and we're talking here about ASCII, just standard text database with comma-separated values, is about 423 gigabytes, probably more now as it, it keeps on, on uh, growing all the time. So let's go into the examples. If you go on ipv6matrix.org.net or .com, where uh, we got all three domains, you end up with this fancy looking globe that you can spin and have tons of fun with, but you can also uh, change the date at which uh, you want your sample um, to, to actually show the uh, connectivity across the world. If you click on the globe, you end up with a map, and the shading on the map is the sort of standard shading that you get, where you get the brighter shading being the place that has the uh, better connectivity. Um, and remember, this is all information uh, content providers, okay? If you scroll down, so you can click on each one, any one of these countries, or what you can do is to scroll down and you see this first thing, and this is something I took yesterday uh, night. The last scroll was from November, or the last finish crawl was from November, and you can see there's some, there seems to be some kind of a, of a uh, sort of flattening off of the growth of information providers. And it's also interesting to see that sometimes you see a, a jump, and that's often when data centers or, or when uh, specific hosting providers suddenly switch IPv6 on. So you don't get the steady growth that you get in the growth of IPv6 users. At the moment, we are looking at about 30% with the US. Of course, this is the sample size of the world's busiest uh, web servers, the US having the, the lion's share of this. If you look at the actual services themselves, however, you find out that the majority of the actual services are actually the DNS. Uh, side. The web serving side doesn't seem to be that high up. So what you get is a, a website that has the infrastructure around that could support IPv6, so the DNS that is around to, to perform that, but you do not actually have the website itself on IPv6, which is quite unfortunate. And for many of these websites, it's been like that for quite a long time, as you can see. If you look at the, uh, the UK situation, so here's the, the, what we have. So you see that little dip. Um, I have no idea why this is the case, but we have had such dips in the past, only for it to suddenly go back up. So as, a, as any banker would tell you, you know, it's, it's coming down at the moment, but it's gonna go back up at some point. Don't worry, it, now is the time to buy. So that's the, the thing that we have at present. Um, as I said, it's not exact science. It might well be the next, next month or the next run we'll, we'll see a stabilization and going a little bit up. But again, you can see with the name servers being the, the lion's share and you can see the, the web servers being quite, quite a, a small amount and the MX records being also quite a, a small amount. If you look at the overall IPv4, IPv6 and dual stack, uh, situation, then you find out that there is a growth of dual stack. So unfortunately, the graphs do it the other way around. So what we're looking at here is a growth of about 10 to 15 percent of dual stack. Um, and there is unfortunately no IPv6 only provider out there for, for websites. So the, 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 all the websites to do I either have uh, a side on IPv4 and a side on IPv6. They might have different uh, um, extensions like WW6 instead of uh, WWW, but none of them appears to have gone into the, the, the case of saying, hey, let's just do a site on IPv6 and forget about IPv4 altogether. That's the uh, growth that you get uh, when you look at the actual domain names themselves. And here you, you look at, uh, you can see that the lion's share here is again the, uh, the US. 
uh, and then the largest ones after that is Germany, France, and, and Russia. Uh, so that, of course, takes away the .coms, .net, .org. We're talking here about the domain name TLD, .uk, .fr, etc., etc. For the US, by the way, we did take .us, but we also well, there's not that many .us websites out there, so we did take uh, the GeoIP parts, component parts of, uh, of uh, .coms uh, for that. Uh, that, of course, was for any type of traffic. If you look at just the web traffic, then you find out that we've got small numbers, but altogether you're looking at about 14% uh, across the world. That's an interesting one. It's, it's, um, the, the question often comes across and says, OK, so what do I get with IPv6? Do, does it go faster? Do I get better service? It's, you know, and, and it's interesting because in the early days, actually, IPv6 was slightly slower than IPv4. And that could have been because the, the networks were just being tested out. So the, uh, the, you, you did have a slightly slower service. Of course, we're only talking about a few milliseconds every time. And it's all stabilized now. So what you get with the ping ratios, um, is that they, they've kind of come together and what you have is, is about um, equal uh, speed on IPv4 and IPv6. Of course, if you look at the numbers themselves, you can probably see trends, etc. And I do emphasize that, so we've got pings, we've got trace routes, we uh, uh, connect to the SMTP server, we connect to the NTP, of course, to the port 80 as well. Uh, what else do we do? The, a whole number of tests that are done, and all of these are actually stored in the database. So you can actually even see the historical trace routes from eight years ago and how now the, the, the trace routes are taking place and maybe different paths are being taken, et cetera, et cetera. Same thing here. Uh, so here we got the hops and the path, and there used to be a time when there were more hops on IPv6 than on v4, and now it's all pretty much stabilized. So you get this sort of same uh, number of hops on, on, uh, on either side. Now, this is the, the sort of data format that we have. And what I did take here was a slightly interesting thing. It's the, the, the these are the busiest websites under .co.uk, or .uk, actually, uh, in, in the UK. And what you find out is, OK, you've got Google. So you've got, um, so this is for web servers. You've got the domain name. Uh, then you've got the IPv4 address, if, it, if there is an IPv4 address, then IPv6 address that it re resol uh, resolves to, if there is one. And what's interesting in there is you do see the ones that are dual stack that have got the same www.google.co.uk, for example. But then you see the Amazon. Amazon doesn't seem to have IPv6 uh, address resolving under .co.uk. You see that the BBC is, is doing something that's, that's a little bit like what used to be done in the early days. So you had www was for your v4, www6 was for your v6. And you could even also have, I think, ipv6.bbc.co.uk that provides you uh, with an IPv6 address. But eBay doesn't have any IPv6. Daily Mail, nothing either. The Telegraph, for some reason, has actually got all the extensions. So it's got WW6 and IPv6 and all this. Um, sorry, no, the Telegraph has got just one. The, the Independent has got all the numbers, so all the extensions, but none of the IP addresses. And I mean, this, this is interesting because this might have been from the days when there was the IPv6 launch, which I think was in 2012. So in 2012, a number of, of uh, providers, of, of content providers said, hey, we got to be on this thing. Let's put ourselves on IPv6. Let's do www6. whatever our domain name is. And then the day after, they, they were, either they didn't pay the bill for IPv6 or just I said, OK, that was very experimental. Let's just put it to the side. But the domain names remained, and yet they only resolved to IPv4. And as you go down, you can see they're not the only ones that are in this case. Um, you can see that the mirror has got the same thing. I'm not sure whether they've got the same ISP, uh, but you've got the same sort of problem. But as you can see here, it's very poor. It's very poor on IPv6 content provision. And so you really wonder, you know, what, what's going on in here? And these are, as I said, the, the, uh, the, the busiest ones. Now, that's, of course, one of the problems of the project. We take connectivity for each one of these different websites as being um, uh, providing the same number of customers. And of course, Google would have a lar much larger number of people accessing uh, google.co.uk than, um, than, than, I don't know, than abc.co.uk. I have nothing against abc.co.uk. I don't know who they are. But if they are among the one million busiest websites in the world, they probably aren't as busy as Google is. So that does skew some of the results a little bit. 
Um, we use JSON as a database format, so the, the, uh, all the, the comma-separated values then get uh, put into a database using these, these things. And you can actually uh, click on those directly on the website. There's a little corner if you uh, feel inclined to look at the actual raw data and so on. There's a little corner where you can look at these. And that's pretty much the, the whole thing. We're reaching the ninth year of data collection. There is a small problem. It's the same machines that run now as ran nine years ago. So now they're kind of held together by lots of gaffer tape, including memory popping out and all that stuff. Uh, the, the occasional bodge to, to keep them running. They, they, you know, let's touch wood. Where's wood? Touch a lot of wood, touch plastic. Um, they are uh, still running. We had a few disks crashes that we always do, but there's a lot of co uh, copies of it and so on. But we do need to virtualize those. And so if anybody has uh, an idea of trying to help out for a virtualization of this and putting it into a virtual machine environment, that would be really welcome. And uh, we also need to diversify the location of the crawls because we're crawling from a single location, Southampton. And I, I don't have anything against Southampton, but it might be interesting to try and see if we can get these crawls from other parts of the world and see if we get the same kind of results. So that's the, the whole thing. I do have one question for you, and, and, and that's it, basically. Why is there a slowdown in growth? And why are some of these websites, uh, some of these content providers, still not on there? I mean, the network isn't experimental anymore. so.